All right, now we're ready to look at this broken glass in Maya as a preview. So image, art window, hypershade. There we go, bring my hypershade menu over. And then we're gonna go look for that texture. Uh, thing about you know when you're developing textures and you're in this folder sometimes if you put it to detailed and then drop it to date uh, have the date float to the top that way you can quickly grab the newest one all right there's my broken glass double click that one to refresh it then I'll make a Lambert this one's gonna be a little bit different um, middle mouse button click and drag and go to default. This will allow the channel to alpha to be utilized. So now you can see uh, the ball has some cutouts on it. And to be honest with you, Lambert's okay. Um, I'm using Lambert because it transfers over to the engine a little bit better than a blend. Even though it's dull and glass is shiny. All right, so this is how it works. I apply it to the glass, and then I go into the UVs of the glass. And let's see if I can show this at the same time. So, and I'll just move these around. Okay, so there we go. This one's got a hole there. This one's got a couple cracks over here. Well, look at what I could do. Let's say I want a different one. I can move it over here. There's a different variation. Here's one that's not busted. Here's one that's busted over here. Here's a chip in the corner. So here's one with a crack. I can move this anywhere I want, and I got a different variation of glass. Pretty neat, right? Uh, sometimes it doesn't make sense, so like that wouldn't make sense at all. But other than that, um, you know, it stands true that you can make a lot of different panes of glass just by using using this one texture. Okay, let's put these into place. So if you zoom way in, you can see that there's a crack in that glass. Very cool stuff. Uh, if it needs to be brighter, I do like this look where instead of the green, it has a, even a, a brighter appeal to it. Certainly you can color correct it to death. That's one way to do it. Um, some brightness contrast helps. So just play around with different themes, but don't move these things because the alpha will um, definitely not line up. You have to just color correct it. Anytime you make a change to the actual structure of it, though, you'll have to update the alpha. Sometimes photo filter um, under some of these will work too. If you m mouse down, You'd be surprised on how many, like the sepia tone looks kind of cool. Yeah, and there's no really right or wrong answer here. It's just experimentation. Didn't like the photo filter. And I think curves might help too. So if, if it's blue that I'm trying to eliminate, I can go into the blue channel. And drag this around until I get a different variation of blue. And if I get too high a variance, like let's say this right here, I can always adjust the saturation level.
There we go. I like that better. Last thing it needs is some sharpening. So to sharpen something, I go edit, copy, merge, edit, paste, and do some filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. You don't want too much of this stuff. Too much noise is too much with glass. And there we go. TGA. Right, right over the top of it, 32 bit, and then just reload it back in Maya. this over here so I can actually see something. So I don't see the reload button. Reload. Much better. Much toned much more toned down. So play keep playing around with that. Keep in getting it as as bright as possible because by the time you get it in the engine it's gonna be dulled down anyway. And then when you get done, you know, go on to the next little part here. There we go. Just going to try that and put that just below hue saturation. and put this one down here. Hmm. That's not too bad. I Again, I can't tell what it's going to look like until I get it back over here. Yeah, much different over here, and it, I like that. That works out really well. I like the contrast of it. Again, always grab it, shift D, move it over to your other meshes, and see if that color schema works with the rest of the meshes. Yeah, it works quite nice. I would say some of the noise could be blurred out a little bit on the glass. Um, a half opacity could be attached to the glass also. Um, I'll cover that next. If, if you want a half opacity with the glass, what you do is you take the white. And I can fill gray over the top of it. Unfortunately, there's no way to just add a gray to this, I don't think you can't like fill it because well, it kind of fills. There's a couple white spots, but I would make sure you save it before you do this. And the half tone for all colors is 128, 128, 128. So that should be a 50% black. Hopefully that saved the right way because I didn't have this showing, but we'll see.
All right, there we go. Now we got a half opacity on the glass, and you can see through it a little bit better. And if you don't like that, you can always uh, go a little higher on the on the brightness of it. So instead of 128, you choose uh, something like so. Have your undo ready, because <laughs> if you don't like that. I think when you go higher in the spectrum, yeah, it's it's the higher the number. So the more you go up here, the less transparent it gets. That's how it works. Yeah, I like that. So you can see, still see through it, but it looks still grungy. All right, good stuff. Now let's go on to the next video where we can do some of this roofing and maybe the door too.